foreign tax credit is limited to the part of U.S. tax caused by net foreign source taxable income. This limitation is computed separately for each year the taxpayer claims a credit. It is also computed separately for each basket. Passive is interest, dividends, rents, royalties, certain foreign exchange gains, and gains on disposition of property that generate this sort of income. Then we apply the look-through discussed next and the high tax kickout rules that we just discussed to see if we treat the income as not passive. Passive basket includes dividends, but what about dividends from 100% foreign subsidiaries? If it's an operating subsidiary earning general basket income, why should dividends be passive basket instead of general basket? That would allow a lot of manipulation. The same goes for intercompany interest, rents, and royalties that a branch wouldn't be otherwise considered to be paying at all. This gets us to the next general exception to passive, the look-through rule. The idea of look-through is that payments from a related party should retain the same character as the payment had in the hands of the payor. Thus, amounts received from a subsidiary are treated much as if they were earned by a branch of the taxpayer. Here's how look-through works. Passive income received by a taxpayer from a controlled foreign corporation, of which the taxpayer is a U.S. shareholder, is recharacterized as general basket, not passive, if certain conditions are met. This recharacterization is not optional. This applies to interest, dividends, rents, and royalties. It does not apply to gains and losses. The rules vary a little by type of income due to the inherent nature of the income. The look-through rule also applies to inclusions of income under subpart F, which we'll discuss in the subpart F module. Before we proceed, though, let's go through a quick definition of the two magic phrases I just used. A controlled foreign corporation, first magic phrase, is any foreign entity treated as a corporation for U.S. tax purposes if that foreign entity is more than 50% owned by voter value by U.S. shareholders. A U.S. shareholder, second magic phrase, is any U.S. person who owns 10% or more of the vote of that foreign entity. The term U.S. person includes U.S. resident or citizen individuals, U.S. corporations, and partnerships that are organized according to U.S. law. The 10% and 50% tests are made by including ownership under the attribution rules of Section 318 with some modifications. We'll cover this in more detail in the subpart F module. So look through applies only to U.S. shareholders of CFCs. Thus, it applies only to 10% owners since that's the threshold for being a U.S. shareholder. Look-through applies only to income that would be Foreign Personal Holding Company Income, or FPHC Income. That's also a subpart F income, and it's the key to the definition of passive income. So let's briefly look at it now. Keep in mind that this quick definition has a lot of holes in it. Pretend you understand it and we'll fill in the holes when we talk about subpart F. FPHC income includes interest, dividends, rents, royalties, gain from assets that produce that income, and some foreign currency gains. But the gain part is irrelevant for look-through. FPHC income excludes same country, related party, interest, and dividends. For determining the basket of income inside a foreign subsidiary, the dividends part is irrelevant since the Section 902 rules that we discussed result in tiering up of E&P and taxes. 
FPHC income also excludes related party rents and royalties from property used in the same country. It also excludes active business rents and royalties. From 2007 to 2014, there was another exclusion. However, there are exceptions to this set of exceptions for determining the basket of income. So let's go through basketizing dividends, interest, rents, and royalties received by a U.S. person from a CFC and also amounts received by a CFC from another CFC. For the balance of this discussion on look through, I'm going to omit saying CFC and U.S. shareholder every other sentence. Dividends are fully looked through as if the recipient shareholder had earned the underlying E&P itself. We must basketize the E&P of the sub paying the dividend. However, there's a de minimis rule under subpart F, and it also applies for basketizing E&P of CFCs. If the subpart F income of the sub during a particular year in which it earned the E&P is both less than 5% of its gross income and less than a million dollars, then there's no subpart F inclusion. Any income excluded from subpart F under this rule is also treated as being in the same basket as the remainder of the E&P for the year, even for later basketizing the dividends. So in basketizing E&P of our subs, we don't have to worry about de minimis amounts of passive income the sub earned. That sure simplifies things a lot. There's also an anti-abuse rule related to the interaction of dividends and interest. We won't discuss that. The formula shown on the screen applies for basketizing a dividend based on E&P. This is the same formula we discussed in the prior segment under Section 902. Look-throughs denied for distributions in a few cases. First, a dividend from pre-acquisition E&P is treated as if it were in a separate basket. Thus, a CFC must track its E&P and taxes separately upon each change of 10% or more shareholders. The purpose of this rule is to keep people from buying credits that is, acquiring an interest in a CFC that has a lot of tax in relation to its E&P. It limits the foreign tax credit for those pre-acquisition earnings to the U.S. tax on the dividend and gross up from that CFC. This limit, in turn, has limitations, as discussed in the regulations. In addition, there's another complex anti-abuse rule that we won't discuss now. The limitations do not cause loss of flow-through upon contributing the subsidiary down the chain. Thus, if a U.S. shareholder drops the CFC in a 381 transaction into a foreign holding company that it owns, the character of E&P and the tax pools remain intact and available as dividends come up the chain. Rent and royalty look through. By comparison, is pretty easy. The rent or royalty received from the CFC is treated as in the same basket as the one to which the CFC allocates or apportions the rent or royalty expense. For example, if a CFC pays the parent company a royalty for use of a patent in manufacturing, then the royalty income of the parent is general basket. The sub used the patent to gener generate general basket income and allocates the royalty expense to that basket. Interest basketizing works much like rents and royalties. The income is treated as in the same basket to which the CFC apportions the interest expense. However, interest expense is apportioned so there's not a one-to-one -one correspondence of income to basket. The interest received is apportioned to the same baskets in the same proportion 
as those to which the CFC apportions its interest expense. There are two additional twists, though, for apportioning interest paid to related parties by a CFC. First, all the foreign subsidiaries get to apportion interest expense on either the asset basis or the gross income basis. The choice can be changed yearly, but the same choice has to be used for all the CFCs in the group. This choice affects apportionment within the CFC and thus the basket for interest paid by the CFC. Second, there is a required order for how the CFCs together apportion interest expense. We'll cover this more in the 861 module. In our video call, we'll also cover an example of apportioning and looking through interest expense. First, let's have a quiz on look through in simple cases.